Hi guys and welcome back to another video. In this one I'm going to be looking at my Red Sea Max Nano. It's a 75 litre um, cube tank, all in one system. I think I've only done one previous video on this tank and it's it does get a little bit neglected. Um, I don't really do a lot to it. There is three fish in the tank. You can probably just about make out all three of them. I've got a pair of black ice clownfish, uh, I think they are, and I've got a, a scooter plenty just down in this bottom left hand corner. Um, tank's been up and running, I think maybe about eight months now. Um, started off with just live rock um, out of my other system. I got one 10 pound bag of Carib Sea sand and that was about it really. So I put the sand in and put some live rock in and just let it tick away um, for a while. Uh, I can't really remember, a couple of weeks, and then moved the clownfish in. The tank was really basic at that point. I'll see if I've got some pictures to overlay. Um, there wasn't much live rock in it at all. And the tank quickly developed cyano, um, like a real slime algae all over the bottom of the tank. And it just wasn't wasn't a great system. Um, once obviously I'd got the the clowns in I then started adding in um, some snails. I didn't really want hermits in. I've got a bit of a love-hate relationship with hermit crabs so I do prefer snails um, and I have added I think there's a couple of Nasarius snails uh, just in the sand bed. There's one bumblebee snail because uh, I did have quite a few um, vermited snails in here and in my other tank, which is obviously where they came from in my other tank. But this was going to be a, a tank to try and get the clownfish to breed, but also I was going to do it as a bit of a a softy tank or just like a frag system um, at the time I've got a lot of frags scattered along my sand bed in my other tank so I thought right I'll set this up and I'll use this as my just my overflow tank basically in recent months weeks it's um, when I when I did the rescape in my other tank I moved some of the rock work over which I think there's two bubble tip NEMs in here, both currently hiding. Um, you can see one just around there, that's upside down, and then the other one's tucked right at the back as well. Um, coral wise, there's some Duncans in the bottom corner, a nice cluster of Duncans there, some Thoas. Yes, being a little clump of Xenia down here. Um, and then I've also got the, I've got my Lobophilia in here. Just gonna take you a bit closer. So I've got the Lobo on the bottom, um, as well as the, I've got a Teal Blasto here, another Blasto there, Acan, a uh, Watermelon Mushroom, from Green Kenya, a toadstool, and then there's some more um, zoas and things on the top. But that's about it uh, for coral wise. There is still some Aptasia in this tank, which had obviously come from uh, my other tank. And what I what I did was I, I removed the Aptasia eating filefish out of the other tank because it was a lot easier to catch. 
and put him in this tank and he did seem to eradicate all of the Aptasia in this tank so I didn't want to leave him in too long because I had the Blastos and Lobos and Acans and I thought once he's eaten the Aptasia he's going to move on to them and he did the, the Acans never seemed to have recovered really um, which is disappointing because I, I did like that Acan um, take you a bit closer I don't want it to focus in it's just not puffy it's not opening like it used to um, the Blastos seem to have bounced back okay but he did he did do some damage to those so yeah it's a it's a hefty price to pay um, but he obviously didn't get all of the Aptasias as you can see there is some coming back um, so I don't really want to add anything else into this tank I don't want to add peppermint shrimp so I think what I will probably end up doing is put, moving the Aptasia eating filefish back into this tank for a little bit let him take it all out and it might just be a cycle that I have to do where every couple of months once I see the Aptasia coming back I move the filefish in here the parameters in both tanks are pretty much exactly the same so the temperatures obviously the same um, the only thing that's slightly different is the nutrients um, but like I say I, I do take it steady when I add them back in um, not as much as I would from buying a fish from the store with the acclimation but I do still take it steady when acclimating fish into this tank the um, Scooter Blenny doing really really well he's an absolute pig always on the hunt for food I do feed this tank live, uh, live food probably twice a week um, that involves live brine shrimp and coke pods um, just to ensure that the tank and the fish are getting what they need. The clownfish obviously adding that live food does promote breeding and I love watching this little scooter hunt for the food. <clears throat> he, is, he is a cool little guy to watch and I'm saying he because I do think it's a male um, but it's similar with the mandarin industry where <clears throat> a lot of the fish will be males and I've heard that they'll if they do catch um, more males they can clip the, the top fins off and try and sell it as a pair or as a female now my uh, local fish stores that I go to they're never 100% sure on what they've got in i.e. male and females and I don't really want to take the risk of adding in another fish and it not getting on so I probably will just keep this one little guy it would have been nice to get him a little mate um, but we'll see I'm not in any rush to cause upset in the tank so the tank does get quite neglected in the sense of all I really do to it is top it up um, I've done one water change in the last couple of months uh, nutrients I did test it today earlier on just before this video and the uh, results were I think the nitrates were around 12 parts per million um, phosphates really again quite high up near one Calcium and magnesium and KH, I think KH was about 6.5, uh, calcium was 320 and um, the magnesium, I can't remember what that was. I do dose on it, um, I dose all for reef, 
again it's not set up to a doser I'm not saying that this is how you should do it I know that it's not the right way to do it but I just sort of take it by what the corals are doing um, and if the corals aren't looking puffy or extended then I know that there's something wrong and that's when I'll usually either do a test or just add some um, all for refit. Like I said guys that's not a way to run your reef tank it's just how I do it it's what I've done I've been in this hobby a while so I sort of just gauge it from that. The green star polyps and the um, Xenia are doing okay, that's starting to, to fill out now. And what I was thinking of doing was, and why I've put it this close, is letting the GSP attach itself onto the glass and it can just start to sort of take over. Like I said, this tank has gone, I've gone through a few different ideas with the tank. It was going to be the clownfish breeding tank. It was going to be the uh, overflow tank for the corals. It then went to be a bit of a softy dominated tank where I was just going to keep soft corals and have it as another little like, mangrove tank. Get some mangroves for it. But nothing's set in stone. Overall though, the tank, I do enjoy the tank. The glass is great. The overflow system at the back don't I wasn't keen on the socks um, as a lot of people are I don't want a skimmer on it um, all I do in the back is usually just have um, a bit of floss in the sock cup um, I've got the auto top up sensor on but I haven't got the pump and I ordered a new pump just because the old one had stopped working but I've just not set it up yet. Um, so I'll manually top this tank up. The only thing that I probably would change about this tank is the, the rear of it. Um, this bit all across here is plastic. Obviously I did get this tank as a used tank and it made it cleaning that bit really hard. I uh, didn't want to scratch it. It was just really hard to get that old coralline algae off. Um, but I could cope with it. I thought, you know, eventually coralline's going to grow over it anyway, or the GSP. Um, so it's not, it's not the end of the world for me. It's just something that I probably would have liked to have done a bit different. You know, if it was all glass would have made life a lot easier um, but that's not something that I'm willing to change. The tank is really quiet though um, which is nice. I think the most amount of noise comes from the AI Prime 16 HD and that's just with the fans. The wave maker I'm running a J-Bow SW20 I think it is, it's one of the smallest ones that they do, because um, the Red Sea pump in the back, the return pump, it just wasn't enough on its own. Um, I did think about getting a Nero 3, but it's a lot of money for a tank that doesn't really require it. Uh, I think if this was my main tank and I was trying to get it as aesthetically pleasing as possible then I probably would look at making them upgrades but for what this tank is and what I want it to be I'm more than happy to just have you know, a little j bow pump on there they're, they're pretty bulletproof for how much they cost um, but yeah other than that the tank ticks over quite nicely with very little interference from me. Uh, you can just see the, the hermit back there. Um, there is still some patches of cyano. Um, I've never treated this tank so I'm not overly bothered about the cyano. It's just about me getting things in check which as I've just said, you know, I haven't been doing, but it is on the agenda now to start 
increase it, maintenance on this tank, getting the water quality right and hoping that in turn that makes that you know, encourages the clouds to start breathing. So yeah, there's the, the update on the Max Nano. Thank you for watching. If you've watched this far, if you can consider subscribing if you have. Um, and if you do want to see more updates on this tank, um, do let me know. It is a different bit of a difference on the channel compared to my other 250. Thanks for watching guys.